Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 Las Vegas. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hey, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are in Las Vegas at the HPE Discover 2016, the first year that HP Enterprises has discovered in Vegas. They flipped the switch before they went to uh, London last year, so we're excited to be back. A lot of changes, a lot more green squares all over the place, green frames, uh, so it's pretty exciting, but you know, obviously, what's at the forefront of all this is data, and big data, what's happening with data. So we're excited to get somebody from the trenches who's out working with customers. Uh, first off, Chris Selland, obviously VP Biz Dev, CUBE alumni, been on all the time, we'll see him in Boston. Uh, how long, Chris, to that show? Uh, that show's at the end of August. At uh, the end of August, a little further. And then uh, Ken Chris, the Director of Data Analytics for PwC, welcome. Thank you, nice to be here. <laughs> Absolutely, so welcome. Um, so data, a lot of talk about data, and, and kind of this, this, this change in data as, as kind of a liability back in the day, like what am I going to do with all this stuff I'm going to sample, to now I've got the data, but that's not really enough. You need to get the data to information, you got to get the information to insight, and then you got to get the insight into actionable information. So what are you seeing out in the real world with some of the customers that you work with? So I, I think that a lot of what we're seeing with customers out there, I mean, I was walking through the uh, floor earlier today and to see all the things that HP is doing with various technologies, the people they're partnering with, very impressive. Um, but fundamentally, at the end of the day, uh, a lot of those technologies are producing data. And like you said, clients and customers are trying to figure out uh, how do I generate value from this? How do I get it in the right hands of the people that can make decisions? Um, what am I seeing out in the industry today? A lot of stuff, particularly around uh, customers, personalization, better service, client experience. Um, we have the whole concept of CX, which is that customer experience end to end. Don't just worry about, um, you know, how am I going to retain customers and, 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 and prevent churn, but also go up the, uh, the life cycle and figure out how to attract more customers uh, using data, personalizing my service offerings, improving my digital products, things of that nature. I'd love to get your perspective. There's a lot of talk of, you know, there's never enough data scientists, right? How are we going to get enough data scientists? But it, it takes me back to the day when there's never going to be enough chauffeurs. This car thing is never going to take off. Yeah. I mean, are you seeing, you know, this kind of, this vision of getting the data into the decision maker's hands, getting it out of the hallowed halls of just the data science? Are you seeing that happening in the real world? And, and what are some of the ways that that happens? Definitely, I mean, we've talked a long time about um, the concept of the data scientist. Uh, being that individual that is like the unicorn and doesn't exist, right? So what we talk more about now is like pulling together those SWAT teams, where you have someone that understands the data, someone that understands the business problem, someone that understands deep analytics, uh, spin teams like that up, go out and find the answers. Yeah, that's funny that you say that, because we, we hear that a lot, that data science is not an individual, it's, it's a team sport. Yeah. You know, you really have to bring a lot of people to bear, and it's it's not just this this hollow thing down on Mahogany Row at the very end, it's actually getting that, in, you know, and getting dirty with a lot of folks. Yeah, that, and I would also say another thing that's going to help with regards to the whole data scientist crunch is machine learning, uh, robotics, things of that nature, artificial intelligence. I definitely think that that's something that uh, people kid about as something that's far down the future, but I think it's coming very quickly and something that custom, or sorry, excuse me, companies should pay attention to. Right. So Chris, you've been playing in this space forever. Yeah. You've seen a lot of transformation. Uh, I wonder if you could speak specifically to how the cloud has really impacted this whole kind of big data meme and this big data discussion, because now suddenly there's a lot of people that have a lot of access to a lot of stuff that aren't necessarily connected to the VPN, you know, back at corporate headquarters that enable that to go out. Yep. Well, it's allowed a lot of customers to iterate faster, to try new things more quickly, set them up, take them down. It's gotten business people involved. One of the things Ken and I talked about in the session we just uh, gave together was about how this is becoming more of a business discussion. So our partnership with solution partners like PwC becomes more and more important because it's not always just IT people these days driving the data lakes. It's now you're starting to see other C-level execs, you know, CFO, the CMO, starting to drive some of these initiatives. And cloud-based solutions make those things more accessible. So we're, we're definitely seeing both uh, quicker iteration and more business involvement. 
Yeah, the other thing we hear, Ken, a lot about was back in the day, right, you had to sample. You know, you couldn't store all the data, you couldn't process all the data, you had, there was a lot of sampling going on, where now that's, that, that's changing. You know, you can store the data, right. you can grab a lot more than you even think that you might need today, but what you might need tomorrow, and you can run big processes against big data sets that you couldn't do before. You seen that kind of manifest itself in the market? Oh yeah, all over the place. I mean, my specialty is within the entertainment, media, and communications business. Um, so when you talk about uh, the cable companies and phone companies out there digesting set-top box data, uh, data coming off of phones, uh, if you go into the world where you know people, Internet of Things, sensor data, um, just that you know we call it a data deluge, um, where, uh, <laughs> where 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 it's just coming in fast and furious, and uh, the folks that are responsible for maintaining, protecting, and serving that data up are challenged more and more today. And there's a lot of business pressure because uh, people that use you know, apps on their phone don't understand why can't I do the same thing with data that I know that we have um, to make it, make it insightful and actionable and allow me to, to do my job. Right. But then kind of the dark side of that is if you have too much data, you know, are, are, you, are you swimming in data that's not necessarily an indication of, of the change that you're trying to impact? Or, you know, it's not an indicator of something that you can take action. So how are people kind of filtering through to get the right data to the right people at the right time? Yeah, I mean, Chris mentioned this in one of his previous answers, but the, the tack that we take and that we stress with our clients is to take a business capabilities driven approach. So when you think about the guy in the field that's responsible for sales, or the person in the call center that's responsible for customer service, taking the viewpoint of how, what data do they need, how do they need it served up, how do they need it parsed, and when do they need it, that is the key to the approach to figuring out how do I find the signals through the noise, um, what data is really worthwhile, and do I really need to protect and make sure it gets served up, versus this stuff I can keep, versus this stuff I really don't need. Right. And of course the other big trend is, is uh, and actually we're at Spark Summit, we got another crew up there, is this whole move to real time, right? And streaming data, and not, not you know, grabbing, capturing, reviewing, and looking back, but watching it in real time and taking action while it's streaming. Totally changing the business. Yeah, fast data and big data are used. You know, you used that car analogy before, and if you heard Meg in the keynote say, I think every driverless car is going to create three Library of Congress's worth of inform worth of data. So, and obviously, it's very important, right? So, you want to aggregate the data about what's going on with the, if you're running a fleet of cars, but obviously, you also have to know what's going on in the car, and that's pr that's about as real time as it gets. So, and so these things are complementary. Big data and fast data are highly complementary, and we're seeing a lot more activity out at the edge, and obviously we've made some announcements here, both in terms of partners and some of our initiatives at HP around that here. Well, Ken, last question, video. We hear over and over and over that video is an increasing uh, proportion of the total traffic on the internet. Nobody ever thought that people would hang out on their phones and watch Game of Thrones or an NFL game or go Warriors. Um, and you're in the media comms, or the Cube, that's right. Well, we knew they would watch the Cube, Chris. Um, they're only 18 minutes. Um, but that's a huge, a huge stressor on resources, a huge stressor on, on capacity, storage, networking, um, and yet the customers want it, right? The expectation is it's going to be there, and it's going to look good. So how is that impacting the guys on the back end that are responsible for delivering a good experience, but they also have pricing pressure, and, and they've got a ton of demands on, on their resources? Yeah, yeah, it's funny that you bring that up. I walked into my house last week, and uh, hell bent on having some good family time with my wife and kids and the TV was on and all of them had multiple devices actually iPads and iPhones that they were and everything was uh, sucking off the internet which was uh, kind of amusing to me but that's exactly your point and uh, a lot of the companies that we're working with in the communications industry specifically their main goal and focus is to make sure that the pipes are big enough that they're utilized properly to make sure people have the best experience possible. So utilizing the technology to not only capture the data, but really deep analytics to pinpoint where are my peaks and troughs and, and utilization and usage going to be, how do I divert and make sure the right resources are available. Again, all so that it can provide the best customer experience. You just can't over-provision it like bananas? <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, well, you nope. can, but it's expensive <laughs> too. So you don't want those pipes to be empty either. That's the thing, you want to have enough capacity but you don't want to overbuild either. So it's it's an analytics challenge. Yeah. 
It is an analytics challenge, and uh, it's, I always think of the old AT&T Ma Bell you know, problem on Mother's Day. Everybody calls mom on Mother's Day. Back in the day, you had to build the pipe to support Mother's Day, even though most people aren't calling her not on Mother's Day. Well, Ken, Chris, thanks for stopping by. Ken, give you the last word. What are you looking forward to in the next six months as you, uh, you know, see some of the exciting things your customers are working on? Yeah, I mean, the technological advances are really great. I will say that uh, customers, especially business consumers of the data, getting very uh, m much more smarter, much more savvier. Um, so the demands on the folks serving up that data and storing that data and protecting that data um, are going to be, you know, more and more crucial. But it's it's a just great business to be a part of. It's great to see. It's great to see the technology and some of the stuff that you guys are doing. So we're proud to be part of it and happy to be here. Excellent. Well, thanks for stopping by, Ken, Chris, Chris Sell, and I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching the Cube. We'll see you next time.